Hey everybody, you may or may not have heard that there was a backdoor discovered in your SSH on all Linux systems that run the internet, therefore the internet is likely going to end and shortly after probably the world as well. That is actually not the case and I am here to show you what actually was discovered. And I started off with a little bit of humor there, but this is actually a pretty serious vulnerability. This backdoor does exist. And uh, well, why don't we just get into it and I'll show you what it is, how it's actually going to impact you um, and everyone else for that matter. But I will just real quickly to get you off, you know, the cliff there. Uh, the world and the internet is not going to end. But that, that said, let's get into it. So what happened then? Well, over the weekend, Friday to be specific, it was disclosed that there were some supply chain backdoors discovered in the XZ and LibZMA packages um, that many Linux distributions use. Um, and specifically what happened, why don't we just read it here so I don't think, and I will uh, put the links to all these websites inside the description. But what happened was this gentleman below right here, Andre, who works at Microsoft, noticed that while he was benchmarking, he was, uh, I forget the specifics, but he was benchmarking something on Postgres. And he noticed that failing SSH sessions, which should be pretty quick, um, were using a substantial amount of CPU and they were also having a much longer delay than he would have expected. So he dug deeper. And over here on this website, we can kind of get a little more insight. I'm not gonna go deep, deep dive on this, uh, but again, all the links will be up so you can take a, a much deeper dive. Um, but just to give you a little bit of background on this, cause it's very interesting and scary. Uh, but what happened, he, so he said, you know, he observed it, he dug a little deeper and what he figured out was it wasn't necessarily SSH, it was the packages known as um, libzma and that is part of the XZ package. And XZ is a compression tool that is built into most Linux distributions as far as I'm aware uh, and it's command line. It's similar to gzip or think like Windows, you'd use zip, they're built in, you know, um, zip tool, it's a compression tool. And he figured out the answer. Uh, it was the upstream XE repository and, uh, and the tarballs. So that means <clears throat> that it wasn't a specific package on say Debian, as he mentioned here, or Red Hat. It was actually even higher level. That's where the whole supply chain thing comes in because that would, XZ would then be distributed to, you know, Debian, then it could be SUSE, then it could be Red Hat. So it, that's that's the, the the impact here when they say oh the, all the internet all Linux systems because literally it would be kind of like I, I can't even think of a better analogy than it'd be like the river before it runs into ten different lakes you infect that river it infects ten lakes type of thing maybe that was a pretty good analogy after all um, but that's the same thing where you're you're going with this and what's really interesting and again I don't want to go crazy into details uh, I just wanted to give you a heads up and you know though specifically. Um, certain people that are running um, the affected distributions, I did want to um, let you know how to fix that. But before we get to that, something really interesting, and you scroll down here, and you know he gives into the details about how he figured it out and all that, and then he talks about the compromised repository, which by the way has already been taken offline. There are, I'm sure, multiple, multiple copies of it out there. It was on GitHub um, that show this, but it has been taken down. And what's really interesting is the way the script tried to hide um, the code that would do this. And it would actually only target very specific systems. And it would only target right here. If these conditions were met, then it would deploy and compile. Otherwise, it did not, which leads me to believe it was really targeting a specific group of people. And maybe even in the future, it was going to even get more specific. But once I show you the timeline of how long this has been going on, you'll it will open your eyes a little bit about how actually um, sophisticated of an attack this was, um, or you know, possible attack it would have been. Um, but what it's, it's doing is it's only targeting Linux x86 and 64 uh, systems. And then if that's true, then it goes ahead and compiles, as I said, um, which is really interesting to me. Uh, and if you wanted to know really crazy details about it, you could actually go here but what I'm going to do is show you a little bit uh, easier on the eyes, in my opinion, which is a graphic that just kind of gives you the rough details. But again, if you did really want to know the whole history of what I'm going to show you right here, you could go to this link and I will put this again in the description. But let's check out the link first or the, the image.
And as you can see, it started all the way back in 2021 with the account being created on GitHub by this user. And then you can see that in 22 of April of 22, there were some patches put up by these two individuals. I'm not here to accuse anyone, and I don't know. I'm you know I'm not privy to information, but I'm just reading the timeline here as it's appearing on the screen. Uh, and then you can see over you know January 23, the trust was gained, and then control over the testing infrastructure in March of 23. And then the this is really when the exploit was starting to be prepared. Um, and then you can see URL changes and the backdoor was finalized in early 2024. Me leading me to think this was getting pretty close to being, you know, okay, we're, we're getting close to game time here. Let's get this out in the environment um, and start using it. But lucky for everyone else and the internet and the world, it was discovered three days ago by our boy Andre. Superhero right there. That guy deserves uh, some kind of a medal. Um, so that's kind of the timeline. So following along in the article, this kind of just goes over exactly what I just did, um, maybe just in more details. To summarize what it says right here, it's pretty much telling you that this happened over a period of time. The individuals that were up to no good pretty much earned the trust of the program um, as a whole and the project management team and all that, whatever you want to call it. And over this time, maybe some of the checks and balances were, you know, not done because there was a trust relationship there and a little bit of pressure put on them. Whatever it may be, I'm not here to blame anyone. Uh, it happened. So maybe it's opened the eyes and hopefully of everyone out in the open source community that maybe we need to relook at, you know, even though we all trust each other, we need to double check things and maybe we need more eyes on it. You know, I don't, I don't have a solution. I'm just here to show you the facts. But that's what this is kind of saying, you know. Um, it serves as a wake-up call to the tech community to reinsect, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, important stuff. And this is mostly why I, this caught my eye, because I'm like, I have a lot of Linux viewers that watch my channel. And this specifically is affecting a lot of uh, Linux systems. So, what exactly and who is affected? And as you can see right here, Kali Linux comes up big. And this is just the one that specifically caught my eye because I'm like, wow, a lot of people, I do a lot of videos on Kali Linux. The good news is it would only impact a specific time range. I think it's from like the 26th of March, yep, through the 29th, meaning if you updated your packages at that time, you would be vulnerable. Before, you'd be downgraded after they have a new patch. So, and you can even see that right here. Kali says, you know, da 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 it was contained. 26 to 29, if you'd updated on or after the 26, apply the patch today. So, and that was back on the 29th. So if you were to go out there today and update your Kali packages, you're golden. Um, and this kind of over here, this is the rating, Red Hat, it's a rating of a 10. You go down here on uh, CISA and they're telling you if you're not on Kali, and I don't know if the other distributions as of today, maybe they do have updated packages, but they're telling you if you updated they're telling you to downgrade, um, you know, Red Hat's just telling you, and again, this really affected kind of the pre-release, the bleeding edge, I think they call it the bleeding, like those releases mostly were the most impacted. Eventually this would have become mainstream, but luckily it was found by our boy Andre, again, ahead of that. So that is what it is. And the last thing, which is really interesting, just if you want to know if you're running, they do give you some things you can try here. And, you know, I thought I went through them all and some of them didn't work. Some of them did. But I thought what was really cool was they actually put up a little shell script here that you can download, which I did, and you can run and it will actually tell you if you're vulnerable. So I have it here and we can actually look at it. And all it's doing is it's looking to see if you even have the package. And if it's not, it's telling you you're probably not vulnerable. And then if you do... It's checking and saying either you probably are vulnerable or you probably aren't. So let's go ahead and run it. So we're going to go ahead and run it. And I'm probably not vulnerable. So I would suggest everyone just to be safe. You go up there and update all of your uh, packages, whether you're on Kali or um, Ubuntu or whatever you're on, Red Hat. See if they have a package. Upgrade your upgrade your packages. Um, update your packages, I should say. And you should do that anyway, best practice. Update your software, I don't know, once a month. Uh, whatever you're comfortable, once a week really is what the, the standard protocol critical should be resolved within seven days, highs within 30 type of stuff. Um, but anyway, so in summary, 
the internet's not going to end. All Linux systems are not going to be compromised, but some may because, you know, some people might ignore this. And um, in the future, this is something to keep an eye out for. I know a lot of you are into cybersecurity on this channel, and this is the stuff that you're going to start to see. This won't be the last supply chain we see, believe me. They even do this at the hardware level and the firmware and um, things of that nature. So just wanted to get this out to you. So any questions, again, more details, everything will be in the description. I hope you have a great day. Take care.